I, I go to Tinder and I'm like, Tinder, something's not working here. Cause I swiped a lot and I'm getting zero, nothing. Zero. No. Okay. Bro. Correction. Correction. I read this here. Let me just read the email. Yeah. All right. I say this to Tinder. Welcome back to the Smart Nonsense Podcast. This is episode 77. I'm Henry. That's Dylan. On Smart Nonsense, we talk about entrepreneurship, self-development, and challenging norms. I haven't done this in a while. Yeah, your T's kind of low. Today, my T's low. <laughs> my, that's my testosterone he's talking about, baby. Um, a lot of tea talk. Anyway, today we're talking about you. Yes. You. Three lessons you learned. That's what happens, abroad. right? When Studying we don't have abroad. a pod for a while, we don't want to prepare. Your life is boring, so we just revert my to me. My life is awesome. <laughs> my mom Our was so concerned with awesome. you. She's like, is Henry, is Henry okay? It's got to be cold on the floor in Chicago. He yeah. doesn't have a mattress. That's the thing. We haven't turned the heat on yet. We're just mooching off the whole building. <laughs> it's been 70 in there. And the Wi-Fi. <laughs> and the Wi-Fi, mooching off my parents. Um, no, it's, it's a time to be alive. Things are great. I think um, last time I was here, I pounded a four loco. Not going to happen again. I lost that whole afternoon. I was just dizzy. And <laughs> you drunk. lost the podcast. Too. <laughs> Shit was terrible. All right, Pop. You don't even know. Do you know what we're talking about? We're talking about Argentina. We're talking about Argentina. Everything I learned. I did a study abroad there. Lived there five months, maybe even more. Could have been more because I ran into fiasco at the end. We're going to talk about that. Are people subscribing? Are they reviewing uh, this? Like, we got to have a call to action. There's got to be some call to action. Well, listen. This episode is going to be so B-roll heavy because I got a lot of footage I haven't released mm. to the world. Watch this on YouTube. I'm looking at you, camera. I'm looking at the main camera. Wait, wait. The close-up camera. This camera. Yeah. That camera. Yes. yes leave yes. us a review. Just say, hey, tell them, tell them Henry sent you. Say Dylan said you got to leave a review. Give us five stars because... Henry gets a kickback. I give him 50 cents every yeah. subscriber. <laughs> 50%. There is going to be a lot of footage here. There was a, a whole vlog. I know that you were editing and it never so, got released. It was too much work. It was like a 16 minute thing. I spent a lot of time on it. And there was like, there were a couple things that just kept bugging me. And so I decided to never release it. It's been shelved. You got to delegate. What do you say about procrastination? Procrastinate equals delegate. Yeah. Somebody else should, should make that video at some point. Mm. We got a lot of people that Anyway, what'd you learn? Where'd you go? When well, was this? All right. Here's the thing. And, right? and. Who cares? Like who, who? That's that's a great. Who does this matter for? This is for anyone. Right now, you can't really travel, but if you're trying to just make a fun life, that's what I. At the end make of the day, just make a fun life. We got this little life. We're, we're sculpting whatever the hell we do, and I'm just trying to make some cool shit and throw it in some weird places and mm -hmm. see what happens. <laughs> and that's how I ended up in Argentina. That's how you ended up in Argentina. <laughs> because okay, everyone. Everyone's like, oh, Spanish is cool. Like, I want to go to some foreign language country as I'm spitting everywhere. And I didn't want to go to Spain. I don't want to be the Barcelona mm. person who's like, España. España. I didn't want to be that person because that's just like your, your basic white girl little trip. I'm going to call them out. They've okay. got to be called out. All right. MC, I'm talking culture. to you. First call interview out, guest. Call out culture. Call out culture. But I didn't want to do that. And the. Cuba was another option. Mm -hmm. I already went there. Cuba is, we talked about we it before. We've got to have your dad on. I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm not supposed to hit the table. I know that. We've got to have your dad on here to talk about, oh, you got something in your tooth. No, the I just have a smoothie. The camera's not going to see it. All right, all right. It's on no one knows. Side, but should we get it? Should we pause oh, it's going to bother it? you. No, it's not. I don't care. You keep talking. We'll but just you close up me, on you. You told, me, you told me right before this episode started that I haven't yeah. been telling you how you look. And now, oh, you, that's now you gross. actually got something in your teeth. And I think I got it. I feel like I should tell you. Yeah, yeah I, you did. I have a very consistent morning routine, which involves a magnificently large smoothie. Yeah. And a lot of berries like get put three. in that. Is it just one? Well, I make one for myself. I drink a little bit, then put some more stuff in and give a little bit to David and then make myself another. So I, <laughs> I consume a lot. You're we get keeping it. us alive. What the hell? All right. So you were talking about going to Spain, right, right. Cuba. I didn't want to go to Cuba. Cuba's just, it's a mess down there. Seems I thought, cool. It, they haven't seen the world in yeah. 70 years. But that's kind of cool. Anyway. It's, it's not a good place to study. Maybe it is. But I wanted to go to Argentina because it's like on the complete other side of the Western Hemisphere. We never see it. It's so far away. You got Patagonia. You got so much to travel. That's one of the things. It's like that country, I don't know how big it is, but it's like United States scale. And you just get everything. You get like, the the cold weather in Patagonia, Tierra del Fuego, down down south, down right? down south, literally penguins and icebergs and shit. 
And then you can go to the Amazon jungle to Iguazu. It's like the craziest. It's a, uh, what is that? Jurassic World. It's like Jurassic mm. World sort of place. It's mind blowing. All right, we're going to start putting some B-roll. So watch Here this show on YouTube. Here B roll is coming in. But, oh, there's so much. My point. But, but then you get like high desert. Right? right. You also get like big cities like Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires. Um, it has it all. That that to me sounds a whole lot like California, which I love about mm. California. You know, you've got like Cali, Mex Mexicali <laughs> in Mexico. the south, right? That whole beach thing. You kind of go up, you get some big cities, you get the forests, and then up north you get skiing and stuff. So It hits everything. I don't know what it's missing. It's literally got everything. So that's, that's point number one. Lesson number one. Be wild. That's wait, 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 I missed the lesson. Was was Argentina was wild. Argentina the wild choice? Yeah, because you on, you okay. get so many different diverse biomes to go wild, and I mean it extends further than just adventure. But like, literally, we talked about this before. But like, I just want to go to this place, and sometimes I, I hated everyone in my study abroad group. Mm. Sucked ass. So I just went on my own, did my own shit, met my wait, own. Wait, elaborate friends. on that, right? Because it's not that you hated them. I think you hated that. They were there all hanging out with mm. each other, speaking English. And like you were there to learn, right? I just want to learn Spanish, get a Spanish girlfriend and just live the life. Shall I failed. we talk about <laughs> this Spanish girlfriend? I have two talking points today. Only two. If you could humor me I, and you want, I think we have to go down the Argentina Tinder rabbit hole. God, we really can't avoid this. I never should have told you guys. You know, I actually, because I knew, I knew you were going to pull it up. I had to get the actual documentation because I wanted to know what exactly I said. <laughs> is that what this email is? <laughs> yes. Yes. I was, so I'm sitting here. I'm looking at your tablet. I'm like, why does he have his email open? You did want to go down this rabbit hole. No. Let, me tell, let me tell the people at home. We should, honestly, we should phone Aisen to tell the story because he's so good at it. Can we phone a friend? No. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, okay. Dylan, like he said, right? He just wanted a nice Argentinian girlfriend. I mean, who wouldn't, right? And um, to do so, he hops on Tinder like any other major city and just starts swiping. Swiping. He's like, well, you know, if I keep swiping, someone's going to meet up with me, at least to be friends, at least to hang out. How many swipes you go through? Hundreds, a day? hundreds, hundreds, hundreds. Hundreds. Because I maxed out at 100 per day because I had the free plan. <laughs> and <laughs> did you upgrade? I actually did. I, oh, maybe I did. Okay, so, so a week goes by and, and you've got like, 800 outstanding swipes right a lot of swipes. i mean okay so this email i had to check this was only day three and it, it went on beyond this i just got wait, so wait, fed this up this was day three in argentina this is like day three of, of swiping like a maniac <laughs> all right so we'll, we'll put the actual like <laughs> screenshots of this up but i say i i go to tinder and i'm like tinder something's not working here because i swiped a lot and i'm getting zero nothing zero. no okay bro correction correction i read this here, let me just read the email. Yeah. All right. I say this to Tinder. No, wait, wait, but, but, but we're getting ahead of the arc here. Basically, oh, yeah, you yeah, had yeah. no matches. And you're like, what the fuck? Am I that ugly or stupid? So No, I, I never thought that. Okay. I thought we it was thought that. <laughs> we thought that. But but what came to mind for you is like, well, let me just email Tinder support and see if the algorithms Because here's the up. thing. Algorithms have to be broken. I, I ran it by the girls in our group, some some other Argentine friends from class, and they're like, This is this is solid. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. Wait, why couldn't you just hang out with those in your in your classes? You know, I, I kind of made it sound like there were a lot. There weren't a lot. <laughs> There's one. That's, that's part of my problem. Okay, I, I said be wild, right? One of my regrets is I wasn't wild enough. Like, I was wild with adventure, but being social. Mm. This was pre-bold introvert. This was pre-any sort of dating stuff. This is just me being a little hermit crab. Just trying to figure out the world right and so you figure well tinder's algorithms must be broken it's got to be broke because here's the thing you're swiping hundreds of times and so, getting nothing i mean here's here's the message someone but but one girl one girl statistically should have well, fat fingered you and swiped to match <laughs> well i did say i did have like no sad gorda which means like don't be f oh, okay geez <laughs> that little like push away don't be fat well okay so should That's just, never gonna work. Yeah, we gotta we gotta get someone to criticize me on the pod with we'll I, I don't really use Tinder we'll anymore. It's kind of we'll get Jack. Okay. We'll get Jack. Read the email. True Jack's Read the email. All right. Dear Tinder, 
I didn't say that, but I am in Buenos Aires. I normally live in the United States and my Tinder does not seem to be working correctly. So stupid. Everything is up to date on my phone and the application. I have swiped right over 300 times and have only received two matches, both while using the application. I'm blocking. I'm blocking. Go <laughs> listen to what everybody is saying. I'm blocking. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable. My data is turned off and I use Wi-Fi. I think that the application only displays my profile while I'm using the app because in the U.S. I would match with at least 20% of the girls I swipe right on. You lie. <laughs> that's hilarious. You tried to bring in United States statistics. No, that's. I and think that's here's somewhat Emma. accurate. Emma from Tinder says, Dylan, sometimes it's only a matter of time. <laughs> There's some things you can do to help others notice your profile. Basically, Emma goes on to say, why don't you try changing your photos? That's it. She said the algorithms are working. She gives me a bunch of tips. And I'm like, Emma, I don't need your tips. All right. Fix. <laughs> Fix the algorithm. Okay. Well, here we are. It's 2020. You still don't have an Argentinian girlfriend. I, um, mm-hmm. The algorithms are still working for a lot of people. I've shot a <laughs> lot of Bumble weddings this year, this season. I just, I, it's, it's too much of a thing. Like, I feel like you have to be on it. That's why people talk about, uh, like getting VAs. The Adams guys, they were using their VA just to swipe right on Tinder. Tinder was a lot, very laborious work to try and <laughs> land dates. I've got Daniel um, helping me out on that. So he was writing to all the and trying to get matches and all that. Oh, really? It's, it's a lot of work. You got to dedicate your life to it. Oh. It's not my vibe. So that's the thing. I get Can't no matches. Relate. I think it's the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi was off. And, uh, and so, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't being the social butterfly I wanted to be. But in certain circumstances, I would. So like rollerblading, I was trying to make friends, right? So I, there's this like little Argentine group of like international students can go and like meet people etc i did that met some cool people went on some trips with them we can get into that but like i just tried to be a butterfly but i was a bad one i just like one wing (laughs) flapping around the city but then i I found this little rollerblading group because they don't have ice hockey i was big in hockey and they just have rollerblading because it's always hot and so i see this just troop of people going by my apartment it's like i I don't know how to describe this but okay I'm, i'm listening to a podcast right now uh, hardcore history, Dan Carlin, talking about World War One. The Germans, when they invaded, they go through Belgium, I think, to get to France, okay? They have a million plus soldiers going through Belgium, this little Belgian place. So it's like 26 hours of just soldiers going through. That's what this- 26 hours straight, just like walking yeah, through? Just, wow. Right? It's a good- that's 26 a really hour good long podcast. line. Exactly. And so that's what this rollerblade group felt like. It was literally hundreds of rollerbladers just bopping through the city shutting down intersections they're just on a mission i'm like that is the shit and so that was my one little like uh move to adventure out i got my pair of rollerblades and i'm pretty good but these people were nasty and were, were they just, like roller derby people like, no it's just bladers doing? dude but here's the thing were they like skate skater kids boys and girls it's, dude it's just the shit everyone it's like riding a bike i've never seen that that's yeah. because someone Called rollerblading gay back in the day, yeah. and everyone went running for the hills. Maybe. But Argentina, they never had that. So that's just like, that's your go-to exercise. Yeah. And it's dope because, one, I'm kind of good at it, so I could already like bop around and people are like, oh, that one's kind of cool. <laughs> Hands behind the back. Yeah. Slalom. <laughs> I was like skitching on cars. That was one thing that was dope. This, this like random car just drove up by me, and there was a big-ass hill. And he like rolls down his window as I'm trying to like get up this hill. And he saw me and I'm like breathing heavily. He's like, agarralo. Like grab the car. So I just grab his no like shit. his car door. And he just zips me up like one of those no uh, rope toes at a ski lift. Are you a, are you a helmet roller skating wearer at the time? Mm, I hope so. Mm. I really don't know. You don't remember? Oh, I do. Well, I did buy a helmet because I went to Patagonia and did the craziest shit of my life there. Okay, that's that's point one. Be wild. Social butterfly. All right, let me let me there's so much here. God, it was five months. All right. So like be wild. I met this other dude that was a role. We got all the time in the world. I know. No pressure. I know. I, I know. only have one more Settle point. Settle me down. Settle me down. So this this one guy, we wanted to go to like this cool uh rollerblade hey, arena man. thing. Uh, yeah, like a haven, like some like they have a silos, which is like barbecues, oh, and everyone just chills out, rollerblades, just shoots the shit. It's a blast. And I wanted to get there, but it's like 45 minutes away. Didn't have a way of getting there. And this guy's like, dude, I got a sick bike, like a, a motorcycle. And I'm like, you got a motorcycle? Well, I got like all my hockey gear. You have all your hockey gear. We have our sticks. 
So I'm this guy's pretty big too. I'm like, I don't know. It's 45 All minutes. All your hockey away. gear is like a huge duffel, right? It, yeah, it's a big ass duffel bag because your, your helmet, like your skates, yeah. your, your gloves, Pads. helmet, whatever. I think I said that, but whatever. So, you got two helmets. You're so <laughs> <laughs> you're so special, dude. This shit was wild. So he rolls up to my apartment, and I'm like, dude, I don't think there's room. And it's like, you, you know, like medieval Describe times. His bike. It's just like a, a fucking blacked out bike. He's got a black helmet like us, but like legit. And like a, like a race bike, like a yeah, yeah, like a right, like a race bike, oh, like yeah. whips. Okay. And I'm like, well, I kind of signed up for this one. And so I, I'm like, dude, I don't know if we can fit, but he's like, dude, just hop on the back. We'll figure it out. So he puts like the duffel, like literally hanging over the handlebars. I'm in the back, like falling off, trying to grab this dude. And we're just whipping around the city like medieval jousters like this are sticks because I, I had to hold oh, the sticks shit. so they're just coming like on either side of the handlebars shooting out <laughs> like dude. i imagine you trying to go between cars and your literally, sticks just sideways and it plows you off it it was it was literally the sketchiest shit i've ever done but it was no big deal we we're just bobbing and weaving through cars i think i've never That's told anyone this <laughs> like no big deal no big deal we didn't die but it was fucking crazy and that's like my new my new rain poncho on the bike you know it's like you go to any other country they're like rain snow no big deal just put a poncho on so i got a poncho no, no big deal that's gonna be my motto today no big deal no big no deal. worries everywhere we go though it's like no worries no sweat yeah all this good. that's the thing uh, i guess i'll is there a second point here all right maybe i'll make the second point the transition make the second point i do want to talk about patagonia though but Recap, second first point, point was be wild. Be wild. So just do like this wild shit. Granted, I could have died many times sketching and riding on this dude's bike, going by myself to crazy places. Do a lot it's of all food about poisoning. The story. It's all about the story. I think we take a lot of nicely calculated risk. Mm. And then just be smart. Oh, okay. If you're doing something like, like that, wear a helmet. It's a small price to pay. Um, just say yes. I'm going to let's talk about Patagonia. I know we're going to switch to something else, but fuck it. So Patagonia. It's okay. You're thinking the Andes, right? One of the is that the biggest mountain range in the West? I think so. Maybe it's like lengthwise, tens of thousands yeah. of feet. Like lo, it, just either that or the Rockies. When we it's, flew, it's an important mountain range. It's wild. So there's this place called Siete Lagos, and it's seven lakes. And so everyone's like, "Oh, you want to go there? It's the the beautiful outdoors, beautiful pristine lakes, everything like that." And the whole area, like the the route is 110 kilometers which is like 75 or so miles right so 75 miles a lot of people just drive it in a day some people are crazy enough to like want to bike up and down the mountains my friend and i were like let's let's make this fun right and he didn't have money because I, I had a little bit of cash but like i probably could have afforded a rental car really familiar why are you always hanging out with people that have no money i know i know you think we go to good schools and stuff and no nope. find people nope. so he doesn't have money, and we're like, all right, how can we do this trip as cheap as possible, cheaply as possible? And I'm like, well, I got my rollerblades, so I won't spend money there. I'll just bring my rollerblades. You're going to rollerblade the 75 miles, the, the ring? In, in my head, I'm like, I'll bring them, and then if I get tired, uh, I, I, I don't know. So I'm like, I'll bring my rollerblades, and you just maybe you rent a bike, and uh, we'll figure it out. So we're doing the math in our head, and we're like, oh, that makes sense. We'll just bike it, rollerblade. What we didn't remember is this 75 miles on a bike and rollerblades is not a one day trip. This is like four days yeah. of just constantly going like 15, 20 miles a day. And so you need all your provisions. You need oh, all your clothes. Yeah. It's Patagonia. And a like, tent? No. Shit is like, yeah, a tent. Literally everything that we brought to Machu Picchu. We have to do that, but now it's biking and rollerblading up and down the Andes Mountains. Because you thought you were gonna do it in a twelve-hour day. No, we kind of knew, but we just didn't. And we didn't do the math in our head. Like, wow, well, that's a lot of shit we gotta bring. Yeah, you need like a whole like stuff sack of food. Well, and that's water. the thing. So I kind of, I, I had the rollerblade, so I had a little bit of an excuse. I'm like, I'll just carry my clothes and stuff, and you can get this fucking wagon behind your bike. Well, like, <laughs> <laughs> so so we just we like attached this little wagon and put it's all our wagon tent rental? and shit <laughs> yeah, we had to get a wagon rental because we got there and they're like oh my god 
they, they saw us at the bike rental place and they're like, you two, one, there's this grandma that came up to us and she's like, I have never seen anyone rollerblade these mountains in the history of Yeah, Argentina. she's probably walking them like every other grandmother we saw. <laughs> this shit's Peru. wild, but literally no one's ever done this before. And for good reason. And they're like, you don't, you're going the wrong way. Like this way is mostly uphill. You don't want to do this. <laughs> the first day is only uphill. So we, we get there and it's like, literally just go to the top of that 8,000 foot mountain. Rollerblading, correct me if I'm wrong, but rollerblading uphill, no small feet, no fun. It's hard to get momentum, like trying to it, carve out. Uphill. It was the saddest. It was literally just beating sun 90 degrees out. We have, we're going to roll the B-roll right now. There's so much B-roll, but it's just like this for four days straight. And we had to travel lightly. So I didn't bring like a proper jacket because I'm like, oh, it's 90 degrees out during the day. It's probably 70 at night. Dude, shit was like 30 degrees at night. And I had like a long sleeve shirt and maybe like a little like rain poncho. Sleeping bag? What were you sleeping in? I think we must have had a sleeping bag. Or a cabin? I think we just had a sleeping bag on the tent on the floor. It was like broke back mountain shit. Like, am I going to? I just met this dude like two weeks ago. We never hung out one on one. And now we're just spending gonna... four nights together because he was the only one crazy enough to do this trip with me. And you're going to die together. It was fucking nuts. But like, it was literally the most beautiful shit because you're in the middle of nowhere and you just see like all the stars that ever existed. It's crazy. And then we're just at this place. Like we set up this little tent at this abandoned. Uh, right. Didn't you have a saving campground? grace at some cabin one freezing morning or was that a different, different trek altogether? Mm, I don't know. It was freezing cold. You had no jacket. You were going up a mountain, and then there were a bunch of you huddled in a. Oh, that was Panama. That's another. Just yeah, well, that's, you gotta go doing. wild. This is why you can't plan our trips. You just show up you, prepared. You end up on the brink but the of death. Stories are great. Yeah, and like it, it's just cool as shit. And then we got to the place finally. Like we saw all these beautiful sights. We got crazy videos. We'll put them up. And then we're like, all right, well. We still have to go another hundred or so miles to this next place. There's no fucking way we're biking and rollerblading this. We didn't have money. So we're like, let's just throw our thumb up and just oh, really? wing it. And so we're walking down the road. Like we, we'd spend like two hours, get one person to bring us like 30 minutes down the road, <clears throat> get back out, have to do it I again. I know this. Yeah. It I took us hitchhiking around. seven hours. Never I got all the footage. I'm going to, we're going to roll what, what all the footage. What are your thoughts footage. on hitchhiking? Scary? If you're if you're a guy, if you're two guys, you're never gonna get picked up. Uh, but we saw people with girls, and it's just like, but that's creepy. It's just like that's like they us trust. in China. We couldn't get picked up because we were white. They didn't want to deal with the English. <laughs> it's just it's a lot. I don't know. I, I, I'm a big point fan. Two? Just point two. I didn't even beauty? get to point two. This I thought that was point two. This is still be wild. Oh, right. that's still be wild. That's point two of point one. <laughs> What you got on point two? There's just a lot of shit out here. All right. That's I like the are. third point, so I'll save that for last. Yeah. yeah. It was original number two. <laughs> number two point now. <laughs> Appreciate the basics. Voluntary simplicity. Am I right? Yeah. Yes! <laughs> I just started a book. Um, it's like a, a, an atlas on voluntary poverty. Just mm. what a bunch of people have said about it. But anyway. I mean, this wasn't as bad as Cuba, but like, we take so many things for granted right now. Our Wi-Fi is kind of on and off, but like Wi-Fi down there, shit, you just can't trust it. Clearly with my Tinder, it just doesn't work. Like nice call back. The, the monetary policy there, it's just like we take stability, like the dollar today, you know, in like five years, it's probably going to be worth a dollar. But there, they've had hyperinflation. Like I studied Argentine economics and like it's the most wild shit like It'll just go literally like a, a fucking tsunami, just up and down, up and do. down. And that's why everyone just loves the U.S. dollar, because that's the only stable shit around. And meanwhile, they're having like, whatever, in the like 10 years ago, people were just ransacking places because the inflation, you would get money and then you'd have to run immediately when you get your paycheck, you have to run to the grocery store to buy everything you can, because literally they, they stopped using price tags because the price would go up so fast. They don't even use price tags. They're like, oh, it's going to change from the time we put it on to when the time the person gets so it. So they're running up. with their paycheck to the store to lock in decent prices, hopefully. Right. Because say you wait an hour, 
your money is going to be worth 80% of it was That's what it was nutty. an hour ago. So we just take all this shit for granted, but it's so, it's so fundamental to just like not having a chaotic society. Yeah. What else they got? Uh, there's some cool stuff like what yeah. I really liked. Yeah. Uh, I mean like water, plumbing. Oh. Things that like we yeah. just don't even think about here because the infrastructure and the institutions are so strong. We just got a lot of shit set up. Well, like everything is run so slowly out there. It's just a pain in the ass. They don't have Amazon. Like you can't ship things or import things easily. There's a beauty to a lot of that. No, dude, it sucks ass. You don't <laughs> want that. Amazon is the greatest thing that ever was. Just a lot of cool stuff. One thing that was kind of interesting because they have like, they're super socialist. At least they, they were. So they'll have like free bicycles for everyone to ride around the city and dope bike lanes. Like I loved it. I was going to ask you like four minutes ago. I don't know anything about Argentine. I keep wanting to say Argentinian or Arge Argentine. Argentina's history. I was gonna ask you if this is a socialist country. Uh, well, you said. Uh, go on. I'm with the free bikes. Up. What's the deal with the free bikes? Oh, they also had some crazy. Sh I forgot about this, but they had like biggest genocide in the 70s. They were literally. I forget like why these. Oh yeah, because I think it was like anti-socialist. Because like Pinochet was in Chile. I forget. Uh, Allende was it Allende in Argentina. But basically, like, they would literally just take people and just, like, bring them to these concentration camps and then just either let them die there or, like, bring them up in helicopters, throw them out of helicopters, thousands and Some thousands of people. specific ethnicity? It was just, like, uh, left versus right sort oh, of thing. Oh, shit. And this was in, like, the 70s. Yeah. Like, 50, 40 years ago? It's like Bosnia in the 90s. Well, it was all religion-based. So, shit's just crazy. Like, there's so much we take for granted. Like, yeah, granted, right now is kind of chaotic. But it could be wild. It yeah. could be so much crazier than it is. Or even in Colombia, five, six years ago, you know, we're talking to that, our, our host from Bogota. Mm. And she's like, driving around the block, you don't know what kind of, you don't know which side of the army you're going to run into and, right. and what they're going to want to do with you. Oh, true. Her story? Yeah. We never talked about that, but like, because <clears throat> she was, she had some well-to-do family. Like she was. Right. It was her last name was an issue. They were, they were politicians. And they're driving across a bridge, kind of like you think of, uh, what's Narcos? Narcos, like the first episode of Narcos, driving across the bridge, and there's a, a roadblock. And you don't know if the roadblock is going to be government or like this little militia, the militia right. group. And so it's basically, if it's the government, they're good. If it's the militia group, they, they will literally yeah. kill everyone in the car. Yeah. And so she's driving up in this car, and the, the entire family is like, it's just flip, flip your coin. Heads we live, tails we die. Yeah. And like, shit, like, I can't Again, even imagine that. Was that 10 years ago. So that's a little bit ago. more serious than my, my original point of having free bicycles. <laughs> what was the free bikes? Well, it's, it's dope because you're like, oh, free bikes, we can ride them wherever around the city. But then you find like half of them are Don't, broken. Yeah. Right. They're, the good ones are always taken. You can't depend on this it. This is the same thing in China, right? They've got a like decent bike share program. They're pretty cheap. But as a result, they all have flat tires. The fucking the spokes are broken. Like they're not usable. You need private property. Like people, someone has to be like responsible for the things because government just sucks. Everyone complains about it there. Uh, and then meanwhile, you see like city bike, and they're all dope all the time. Mm. And you can always expect that there's going to be one there. So it's like things that are great in theory, just in practice, suck. Uh, yeah, a lot of things too. God, there's so much, but like they have so because. There's so much like going on with the monetary policy and just government sucking. People were protesting all the time. Like I'd want to go to class and like, hey, no, the subway is closed because yeah, right. they're all protesting. They're on strike. I had a flight back from that Siete Lagos Patagonia trip. And they're like, no, you can't fly back because everyone at the airport's protesting. So we're still going to yeah. keep your money from the $300 flight. And here's yeah. a bus back. This is that similarly for me that. Same thing in like South Africa, right? They're like, no, you know, garbage hasn't been taken out for three weeks. The garbage department's on strike. Mm. In Zimbabwe, like your plane doesn't show up because the pilot didn't feel like getting on the plane and landing it. Sorry. Or or one time like the the, the president of Zimbabwe, uh, I forget his name, doesn't matter, but he would need a plane. And so then your plane to South Africa is gone. Was it Zimbabwe that had the, the craziest inflation uh, ever? Yeah, they have US dollar now. Oh, really? Is their currency? I remember it was like Germany and I think Zimbabwe were the two craziest. Inflation. Name started with an M. Just died. Meerkat. <laughs> so.
So, there, I mean, there's just a lot of stuff we take for granted. And I think that's what's nice is like most people will take uh, a two week vacation, a week vacation and go to some resort and they yeah. never see the reality of life. But here I was living with the family. I got to see like, hey, there's a 28 year old dude just living with us. That's her son. And it's like, that's normal. Like most people aren't lucky like we are and can live in their own apartment. Right. And it just takes so much for granted in terms of just like liberties and shit. So that made me appreciate a lot. Uh, more serious of a point than number one with Be Wild. That is more serious. But you get that. I tell people all the time, you get that everywhere you go outside the States. Mm. It's like, it's just really comfortable here. And a lot of our standards are kind of wacky. Dude, our life is so easy. It's so easy. I just crush a bunch of smoothies, do a little workout, ride our electric bikes in. I, right. Like, like you go anywhere else. Who knows if you're going to have electricity to charge that bike overnight? Mm. Right. Shit. Power would just go out all the time. And like, oh, power is out tonight. Can't do any work. Yeah. So, all right. That's on point strong number institutions. Three. Let's go. A little recap. Be wild. Number one. Number two, appreciate the basic shit in life. Your little privileges. Number three, be human. Wow. That's really nice. That's really nice. I even, I even talk about what the aspect? Point. In what aspect? Well, this, this is, we got to talk about gratitude. Uh, that whole thing is just like. Is, what I love is like, they always say Argentina is basically like take Paris and move it to South America. It's Paris of South America. And the whole lifestyle is just set up like that. Like everyone's out in parks tomando mate, like drinking mate, which is their little tea. And they all pass it around their circles. And it's just. Like, everyone just has a straw. It'll be in class, too. What does mate mean? It's like yerba mate. Yerba mate is just... Yerba mate. Yerba mate. Yerba mate. Yerba, yerba mate. We gotta you stop. Gotta we gotta get gotta on stop. YouTube. <laughs> but it's so cool, because everyone's mate. just chilling out, like, hanging. And it, it's just, like, such a relaxed lifestyle of just, like, hey, let's go out to the park, hang out. Or uh, it's 1 a.m., and you see two 70-year-old people just on the street corner, just... Drinking wine and, and talking. People watching. It's beautiful. Having a cup of coffee. It's, that's like uh, another thing with America that really bothered me and coming back it was very noticeable. Is like we don't touch each other at all. And we talked about it before, but there I was kissing guys on the cheeks. Like it's just like I can't even, I just imagined it and it felt super weird with you. You want to kiss me for the clickbait? <laughs> <laughs> Man. So, a lot of things, you know, that's a, that's a silver lining I hope comes out of this pandemic is the cafe culture and eh, touching culture. Right. Being know, outside. That's something different. But yeah, just sitting outside, having a cup of coffee for two hours for lunch, people watching, having a cigarette, you know, in Paris, at least. It's really nice. It's just like there. And what's happening right now is finally like in the city, in Chicago, in the suburbs, they're actually like blocking off some streets and parking lots to have people sitting outside. Mm. And I think that's a good thing. Until the weather gets shitty. Weather's always pretty nice down there. So yeah. Benefit. Well, in Paris, they've got nice awnings with heaters on them. Uh, so people are outside all winter long. Yeah. Because it's an outside-inside hybrid. I mean, I had to ask uh, like my professors down there because I still have a group chat. And I'm like, hey, what is life like during COVID? And it's like, honestly, like, People are just fed up like they they can't they're just so used to being able to touch each other and like being super just friendly and, and hugging all the time. I remember actually when I first oh, got why, there, yeah. uh, Koti was she was like the house mom or whatever. And she introduced me to the 28 year old living there. And I just stuck out my hand to shake his hand. And she's like, what on earth are you doing? No, give him a hug and kiss on the cheek. Mm. And I'm like, oh, that's how that's how this works. And, dude, you just fall in love with it immediately. As long as there's, like, this cultural, not pressure, but, like, norm. everyone's doing it. Yeah, it's, it's a cultural norm. norm. And it's just not here. It kind of sucks. Yeah. Yeah, you're our only friend that mostly goes in for hugs. Really? I didn't even At least that. around the time you were there. Certainly when you came back. Uh, I, that's the thing. I might need to go back just to, you like. You need a hug. <sighs> you need a hug. Be human. I think people forget to a lot how similar we are like as a species right and if you look at so this book thanks a thousand i just read yeah yeah, yeah. Um, talk about it uh what's uh plug your book uh your uh we're video gonna talk, we're talking about it another time okay yeah i mean people should always go on youtube and, and watch yeah, yeah. my stuff 
But um, what was he saying? He was basically like the author, A.J. Jacobs. He noticed that he was just grumpy more than 50% of the day. Just about anything. Like the bus was late or he got to the train and the train door closed, right? But, and he's, where am I going with this? Basically what he was saying is, is we remember all the things that, that go wrong, but we don't like relish in the stuff that goes right every single day. And I think on top of that, we don't relish in like the humanness of people every single day, like getting your cup of coffee. Someone held the door for you. So just, just be human. It's lovely. I mean, one thing I like too about the be human thing that you kind of said, like everyone's the same. They treat everyone the same. So everyone just shits on one another and it's super fun. <laughs> and I miss that so much because it's just like you dish it out. It comes right back it at you. It goes around, comes around. It's beautiful. Let me make sure there's some, I guess. All right. I wanted to talk about regrets briefly just because it's Let related. Let me talk about regrets before you talk <laughs> about regrets. Because you, expert planner on your way home from Argentina, decided oh, like. Oh, shit. I forgot about that. Yeah, I bet you did forget <laughs> about that. You little PTSD. They're like, oh, I'm not traveling with my friends that do all the logistics usually. So let me just <laughs> let me just get my rollerblades and I'll put them on and I'll get on the bus and I won't give myself enough time to get to the airport. And you got stuck in. Let's go back listen to, to this. listen to it's 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 like taking things for granted, right? You're on. You were trying to get on a bus to get to the airport in like an hour, easy. And and what like it's not necessarily so that those buses are running on time. Like buses run to the minute here, more or less. Yeah, and I you just got stuck. You're like, I did the math in my head. I'm like, all right, going to the airport. I'll go there. I'll leave four hours ahead of time, and you know maybe it takes an hour or so in the taxi. Uh, get there three hours, custom shit. I'll just go through. Right, that's fine. I got a little bit greedy, and I'm like, oh, I want to get a gift for Cody, <laughs> who's my house mom. I want to say bye to some people. So I'm down to like <laughs> you greedy. <laughs> I was at like three, a little over three hours left before this flight. And I'm like, okay, I still got time. I'm taking my <laughs> sweet ass time. I pack yeah. everything up and then I, I call the Uber and I, I call the Uber. The first one cancels on me. I'm like, all right, that's a bummer. Call another one. 15 minutes later, finally shows up. I'm like, all right, dope. And Uber is going to bring me to the airport. There we go. And he gets there and we're, he's like, oh no, there's a like lot that. of traffic. Oh, oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. There wasn't much conversation oh, other no. than like, oh no. Because we get to downtown and it is the worst traffic. I, I, I don't like the traffic excuse, but this is literally. Thailand was like that. They're like, you know what? We just want to keep this light red for the next four hours so that they can fix this curb. We went in one hour and a half. Because I'm like, all right, once we're out, it's just going to be like clear sailing. We just got to get through the center of the city and then we're out on the highway. I'm like, just be patient, Dylan. It's going to work. And so an hour, hour and a half in, we've gone eight blocks. Eight blocks, hour and a half. I could have walked that in 30 seconds. No. I'm quick. 20 minutes. Sorry. If you had your blades. It's, sorry. It's a mile. 30, it's a mile. Like five minutes. Yeah. I would have been what took us in that car an hour and a half. So I'm the whole time I'm starting to sweat. And you know how I sweat. Oh, yeah. I was getting nervous. And then finally, he's like, uh, no, no, I can't. And so I get out of this Uber because he's just like, this, this is just hopeless. I go to call another. This other Uber comes and he's like, oh, no, I'm not going to that airport. That's too far away. Because he thought I was talking about like the local airport that just goes within Argentina. So at this I point, you're on the bus. Oh, we get to that. So I, I, I'm looking at my, my watch and I'm like, I got an hour and a half. I wear watches. You wear a watch. Um, I'm looking at my phone. I got an hour and a half before my flight leaves Argentina. This, <laughs> keep in mind, <laughs> round trip to Argentina, about $2,000. That's a lot of money. One way is about $1,500. a lot it, of there's dollars. There's zero discount there. So I'm like, all right, I got an hour and a half. Migration, like going through that, <clears throat> might take me like 30 minutes or so. This airport's about an hour away. It's going to be close. But I have no way of getting there. I'm just in the, picture me, in the middle of the city, I'm like, no Ubers will take me there. The subway doesn't go there. The buses do not go there, like the, the city buses. So I'm like, there's just, there's got to be like some bus Talk to the airport about or something. just figure it out. You know, that's scary stuff. Dude, I was sweating. 
I'm starting to get real nervous. I got all my shit with me and I'm running around the city like a fucking hooligan. <laughs> and so I finally find this place and it's like 10 blocks away. So I'm just sprinting 10 blocks through the middle of the city with all my stuff. I get there and I see the bus leave. Uh, and I'm like, no, no, no. no. Oh, you and like, no, next one's in 20 minutes. And so I'm just sitting, sitting in this place. I'm like, there. <sighs> No, they're gonna kill me <laughs> my just, mom's gonna like, kill me i was doing the math in my head the bus finally shows up i get on the bus and i have like 45 minutes till this plane takes off it's 45 minutes to the airport and i just start no tearing up all by myself There's no dice it's just no dice i get there i couldn't even find my gate i have no data like my data wasn't working so i had to like go buy more data just to call my mom i like couldn't get on a couple of things here that happened to us again in another flight in China or something. We were sprinting across the airport. That was Germany. That was Germany. What were we doing? Oh, coming back from <laughs> Kilimanjaro. You remember? That was so stupid. You're like, no, 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 no. This is such a nice trip because you had access to we the, were lounge. the lounges, taking and showers you got, like, a and shower, stuff. So we we're just hanging out in the, like massage chairs and shit. I'm oh, like, dude, we gotta suck nice. we every sleeping. second out of this. So I bring that up because I was gonna say you learn a lesson. Right, you learn a really valuable lesson that you're never gonna run up against. I the guess clock. I didn't learn it. And here we are. We almost missed that flight in Germany. <laughs> that that was a close one. It was one. delayed, I think, fifteen minutes. Right. We just got lucky. We got really lucky. So my thing, I show up at the airport. Um, like I can't find a flight. I don't know who to talk to. They all speak Spanish. My Spanish is still pretty bad. Um my <laughs> mom's panicking. She's like, I'm just gonna buy you the next round trip flight, because that's literally cheaper than one way for some reason. So two thousand dollar mistake. Uh, I sleep in the airport next to a Cuban man just on the floor. Yeah. Um, I I, uh, it was it was no fun. So that was a regret. Uh, but now I go to the airport nice. at least three hours early, like sitting in the airport just working. There's no need to not do that. Like airport has Wi-Fi, just chill out. That's true. You're gonna have to put a mask on now, but That's fuck true. it. Uh, I wish I was more social. I went on a lot of crazy adventures, but I didn't make friends until like the last month, and then I. I made like a lot of cool, cool friends, mostly from going to like hostels by myself. But then you're like, it's, it's over. It's like, I got to go. I, I gave my friend my rollerblades. I'm like, hey, carry on the tradition. He can't rollerblade. Oh, you left him there? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, really nice rollerblades too. I think he's going to kill himself. Every time, <laughs> like I just texted him like a week or so ago because it was his birthday. I'm like, uh, estás vivo or yeah, ja, just matado de, de los patines. Like you've already died from the rollerblades, <laughs> and like literally every every Christmas because he's every birthday. I'm losing my mind. All I'm Other saying regrets. Regrets. Just like just be social. Uh, I wish I took more of that back, and like I need kind of the refresher of like being nice with people, like hanging out, doing wild shit. That's like the the only things I remember. Oh, there's another crazy story of like this girl vanishing in front of my eyes. What? <laughs> <laughs> like a spirit? Well, <laughs> all right, I'll just say this Let really quick. Let me just wrap up the podcast and then drop a bomb really quick. <laughs> I forgot about this, but I was like, that art class, that was the most stressful class of my life. I think we talked about before, but it's like, hey, find some fucking styrofoam balls and some twine. And I'm like, one, I don't know what these words mean. And how <laughs> do I find that with no Amazon in the city? I don't know. But I finally like, make a semi friend in this art class. And she like left her project at home or something. And I wanted some of her supplies. And she's like, oh, uh, let's just go back and grab it. Or at least that's what I thought she said. I have no idea. because She spoke really fast Spanish. And so we're just walking down the street and I'm just like kind of trying to talk to her or whatever. And then I get distracted for a second. I hear like a noise and then I turn around. And meanwhile, she was like two feet away from me. I turn around and this girl is just gone. She, I just heard some noise like, oh, okay. And then gone. Literally, I, <laughs> I looked. I've never seen a person vanish. I like looked. I checked in doors of shops and I'm like, Dude, I, I, I don't have this girl's number. I know nothing about her. We just walked like three blocks together and then she's wow. physically vanished. Like, I don't know how to tell this to people, but we are walking side by side. I turn to my right. I turn back to my left and she's gone. And you needed her to, to I, get I, the styrofoam balls. I, I was just thoroughly confused. You must have uh, smelled. So what happened was, I guess the bus pulled up just oh. in time and she's like, oh, it's here. And I, I was zoning out. And she got on the bus and like it closed before I literally turned around like and, bus driving with doors open, you know, coming up to the stop boop, in and she's gone. And uh, and so I was just in the middle of the street in downtown Argentina. And I'm like, well, the class. Uh, <laughs> no, they, they felt bad for me, but uh, it's weird. I wish I had a video of like VR of myself, but 
this is a long just rambling me talking about shit. But people should study abroad. Or um, just like go I think living abroad actually, for like a minimum of a month. Eleventh hour rebuttal. I'm pretty against studying abroad. Oh <laughs> yes. Last yes. ways, baby. <laughs> Let's um, never finish this. Let's go. I, 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 I say this a lot. This is one of the few things I've I've synthesized in my own head. But I think study abroad used to be really valuable. A, I think it's really valuable if you're learning a language. Great. And you're getting school credit for doing so. I also think it used to be really valuable for our parents' generation when it was hard to communicate with the university halfway across the world. Plane tickets were hard to get. They were expensive. Like The fact that your, your university would do all of that and set it up for you and you could get credit for it, all in the bundle of tuition, great. Now I'm like, you know, the world's flatter. It's more transparent. It's easy to communicate. Everyone speaks English. Um, flights are cheap. They're easy to get. Kids our age know how to get them. I'm like, I would rather, school in the States is so expensive. I, I was like, well, let's just milk this and then mm. do the traveling ourselves. But I think, well, they, here's the thing. There are obviously pros and cons, but that's why I You're never going to live with a family for five months on your own. Like no. you'll just go in an Airbnb, maybe with a you friend could, or whatever. Right. But no one's you like need Shimano, to be forced. Like our friend Shimano, another episode. But that was study abroad. He was taking classes. True. Yeah. You need that yeah. force to do it. Otherwise, you're just gonna be a tourist. Right. And I was actually living like in Argentine, just consuming media constantly, talking with people. Oh my God. I forgot about this, but all the dinners, because I think we've talked about this before, but like it was just Koti, who's like a five foot three. 60 something year old woman and like this girl Milena from Germany Milena Milena who didn't eat very much or at least like ate before and staying just with like you pick yeah so we're all like you, we'd have Milena. our dinners every night which is lovely but I come ravished is that the word ravished famished hmm. famished <laughs> I come famished I'm still learning languages I come famished and I'm just Pigging out yeah. on all these meals, Spanish. and they're looking at me like, "Oh my god!" Like this American boy is just you ravaged their pantry. Probably I ravaged everything, <laughs> and then I'd ravage it, and they'd start to like try and like put their forks in their plates, and like, "Hey, let's finish up here." And I'm still I'm I'm starving, and they're like wrapping everything up. They put it in the fridge. Thirty minutes later, I'm a go, and she's like, "I I heard you. you every night you just open the fridge and eat all the leftovers." I felt really bad by the end of it, but it was on the meal plan. And I'm just a hungry boy. It was on the meal plan. <laughs> the study abroad uh, meal plan. Or when she came back with a pizza and I'm like, oh, a pizza. And I ate the whole thing. And she's like, I thought we were going to split that. Yeah, that's, a, that's an American portion thing. And then a Dylan American portion thing. Um, I don't know. You've always been like that. We're never going to wrap this up. You've always been like that. All right. It's three lessons. Fun. We don't film these anymore. We're just having fun. No, it's just one. The three long? lessons. Let me see. Let me see if I can do this. Let me see if you did a good job communicating. No, I didn't. I, did I a, definitely I didn't. I did a good job listening. Be wild. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just go out. Say yes. Do what you got to do. Don't go on the, on, the, on the beaten path to Spain and to Cuba. Be wild. Number two, give me a hint. Give your me book. a hint. Think your book. What? That's not a good hint. I wanted to make it hard. Give me like the first word of the sentence. Or is it one word? It's appreciate. Oh, be human. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, did I make that number two? I thought that was number three. That was number three. No, number three was no regrets. Did we do no, four? No, no regrets. I just kind of slipped in there at the end. <laughs> just, I kind of just put Gotta that. communicate. Okay. It was appreciate like the basic. There you basics go. Your in life. basic needs, voluntary simplicity, but also like just we have so much here. We have so much comfort here. Just look at the dollar for instance um and then be human, be human which is just like that's why i hate like tinder and shit like that i'm just i just love meeting people in person like i like i like everything in person online world just sucks that's why i like these podcasts because mm -hmm. start to talk why to you started this thing you again. only talk on the podcast hey, let's, let me keep touching your keep knee touching my knee and the last one is some regrets you have which i will add have no regrets um yeah what a life. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna tweak well, the quote, but a life lived in regret in regret is a life half lived. Yeah, it's usually fear, but I think it works there too. I think I came back and my lesson, my immediate lesson was like, hey, my number one goal for this was to find an Argentine girlfriend, and I didn't. I failed. But you can't regret that, right? 
Well, I What's, learned from it, right? And yeah, so I yeah. I was just like, hey, I care about this a lot. Like I want to meet people in a non-Tinder way. What's that thing? It's like depression is like regret in hindsight or something, and anxiety is something about the future. I wish you knew it. I wish I knew it too. It's a bomb quote. But basically but, like, just like just I could have been more wild and I, I think I missed a lot of opportunities because like people would go out at like 1 a.m. to 6 in the morning till sunrise i'm like i just can't i can't physically do it and it's just be me not being wild and so i regretted that and now it's mm -hmm. like every chance we get especially now it's like i want to stop being that little hermit crab yeah takes practice all right uh practice. belky we're talking I, I don't know if you're gonna be on the podcast this weekend probably not too many cooks in the kitchen but this was episode 77 again subscribe if you made it this far thanks you must really like us um leave a review tell us how we're doing um come hang out we're in chicago come in, well yeah <laughs> yeah this pandemic why is why is it not i over? just want to i just want to hang out with people dylan just wants to hug people shake hands again and um we're gonna end on we started now, huh? this podcast you calling me telling me i had low t now i actually feel like i have low t well there was a lot i just yelled for an hour and you kind of picked up some of the points I put down. Nice. And that's, that's the essence of the podcast. Nice. Thanks for watching. <laughs> See ya.